Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the the uh, Commodity Insights Podcast with the crew at Farmers Trading Company, bringing you some weekly updates here. Um, I best, I guess, the best way to describe this week would be sideways um, in all of the egg commodities. It seems like the cattle market kind of chops sideways. The the corn and the beans chop sideways, maybe slightly lower than that, but overall, it looks like sideways here. Um, starting with the grains here, Vince. What are your thoughts here? I know we had a flash sale of some some new crop beans sold over to an unknown destination. Um, we've heard some drier forecasts out of Argentina. That's helped kind of spur today. We're up a little bit, but but uh, I guess overall in the next week, what should a guy think of this grain market? If if you've got old crop stuff to sell, new crop stuff, should a guy start looking at that? What are your new, thoughts starting with corn? New crop, I try not to get too excited about it here, Connor. We should have some better times, whether it's corn or beans in that April to June time frame. But old crop, you got May beans up to like 11.99 today. I think Sunday night you got them up to 12.06. Last week it might have been 12.16 or something. In those areas, if you've got old crop to move, especially if you've got it in commercial storage, you need to move it. Um you know, where do you go? What do we do otherwise? I think you're going to be sideways. You're going to get position squaring ahead of uh, next Friday, which will be January 29th, a quarterly stocks report and the planning intentions report. We never know. They can find some big surprises in those. You don't know what you do. And there's at least if you had a rally, I think you have to reward it. If you don't need cash flow until June, July, August, that's a different story. You know, but if you're going to need some in the next couple of months, this is probably the opportunity on both corn and beans to do that. And if you've sold some either corn or beans here in the last couple of months, is there is there a level here that you think that a guy should maybe look at maybe a re-ownership type of strategy or still hold hold off on that and wait? Or what what are your thoughts on that kind of idea? Yeah, I think you have to be patient, Connor. I don't know what kind of a pullback you're going to get. I've seen markets like this way too many times, and it looks like you're going to go and just like that, they can come back and even put new lows in. I think you just have to monitor it as you're going down and be getting at the correction that we think we're going to get. I still don't see this thing run away till at least late April, mid-May. But if you were a person that wanted to reown corn or beans with call options, I would probably look if we got somewhere near a 50% retracement start to buy them i wouldn't do the whole thing again we could still put new lows in here i don't know if we do or not one has to keep in mind that last week we put in new lows and typically in in this market we'd bottom first or top first and corn will be next and beans will be last which means corn and beans could put new lows and maybe we find an exception to that rule and i hope we do but uh, i think sideways is where we're at to, to maybe some weakness because weather really doesn't look all that threatening out of South America. Maybe Argentina loses a little bit with dryness over the next couple of weeks. But on Monday, Dr. Michael Cadonier out of South America did increase that Argentine and bean crop by a million metric tons each. And one thing we have been hearing this week, I guess, is, is that uh, there's going to be some pretty good moisture heading across the U.S. Is that going to be something that kind of bears this market down a little bit or? How much do you think that will play into it this early in the game? I think they will look at it, whether it, it bears a lot of uh, things or not, I think is a good question, Connor. I think we just got to take it a piece at a time and, and see where that takes us. You really probably have to get into mid-May, excuse me, mid-April. If you're, this pattern continues as it could, according to the fog in our parts of the world, then by mid-April, they're going to get a little excited. But right now, they're going to, I think they'll put it in their back pocket and say, okay, Let's just see what happens from this point. Mm -hmm. And one thing we visited about a little bit before this podcast, Vince, was those ethanol numbers and uh, yeah. how that might affect the corn market. I guess, what what were your findings with that? It was another good week in here. Uh, I think we did uh, ethanol. We in, to, did so far cumulatively since the uh, 1st of September, we used 2.925 billion bushels, which is 137 million uh, more than last year in somewhere around 120 million more than we need to meet the goal of USDA. So we'll continue to do that and hopefully keep that grind keeps up. We did again raise the bean oil stocks by 7 million pounds. And that may sound like a lot, but it was still 1.092 billion. So uh, 7 million out of that kind of number really isn't a big thing in there, but it, it is showing us that the demand is not keeping up. 
uh, with the grind that we're doing. And part of that, I'm guessing, is a time of year we have. You get into the driving season of more May and June, July. That should change and go the other way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I guess before we roll on to the livestock here, were there any thoughts on the wheat market? I know you mentioned that we just put in some new contract lows. Um, any optimism in that market or anything a guy should look for? You know, if, if you're someone that likes wheat and you want to reown it, I'm just going to take this off of the May Kansas City. And if you're doing something else, go with it. Um, you probably look at 765, 761 on down to 551 as a buy point. And your risk is probably 547 on that contract. Whether that's going to be the right call, I don't know, Connor. But I think we're trying to build some bases. And as long as you can limit your risk and know where that risk is at, it's, it's not a bad thing to do on there. Mm -hmm. I, we continue. We had some nice up days. A lot of that was on some attacks on Russian oil oil facilities and Russia coming back in, uh, doing some attacks on uh, some of the Danube uh, or Donsk uh, ports, which I'm not sure we did much damage. We'd have heard more, but I think that's just flipping back and forth on there. And I guess before we, one last thought, I guess, before we roll onto the livestock, um, it, it's, we've definitely been painting a bearish picture with the sideways to lower markets is what we've talked about. What could be the the news, I guess, that would get this market bowled up again and get us back to some of those pre, pre January numbers. If you wanted to look at fundamental news, Connor, it would be a change in, in the weather pattern of it's too wet. We can't plant or we're the, the doesn't develop like we think it might with the storm coming in this weekend and it stays dry and they get concerned by the time you get to mid-May. I would think more so we get into a point of a change of psychology where someone is no longer willing to sell it at a certain point and you psychologically turn that to the upside and then you come back and you get some fundamentals that would follow it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I guess for the sake of time, we'll roll on to the livestock here. Um, starting with the cattle markets here, Vince, the, the feeder cattle and the live cattle. I know we've been, been getting a lot of rumblings in the office. Should a guy be locking things up, hedging, or is this thing going to keep keep its bull, bull run going? It's kind of turned sideways here in the last couple of weeks. Um, what are your overall thoughts on this market, either feeders or live? I think you have to look at it as a big picture on are the fundamentals friendly? They are. You know, should we stay strong? You know, from a number standpoint, through 2026, the answer is yes. Uh, but does demand change? Um, do we do something different in the world that scares people? You know, do we have an economic meltdown that people back off? Those are the fears you have to have. And the prices where you're at, having some protection in place isn't a bad idea. Do you need to have huge coverage on it? No, but have a little something there. And again, part of that's going to come down to what are your risk factors? If you came back and let's take it from a fed cattle standpoint, that you got a dollar 86 cent fed cattle. If you didn't do anything in your cattle and they dropped to a buck 20, you're still going to be in business. Is it going to make any difference? If you can absorb that risk and it doesn't hurt you a bit, don't worry about doing anything. I don't think there's a lot of people in those situations, but I think each of us has to figure out what that risk factor is at the other side of it, looking at some stories this morning. This is not usually the time when the uh, box beef is rallying and it's up to 312 coming off like 276 low six, eight weeks ago. Uh, a lot of that is led by the hamburger market um, in the 70% uh, grinds. Uh, you put new all time highs in that yesterday. And in the 50% grind, you did too. I don't remember the numbers. It's something like it was 293 and it went to 312 and that's 70%. I don't remember the 50. But will that get to a point where all of a sudden the consumer backs off on buying hamburger because of the price? And those are the things you have to watch right now. I don't think so. I think the consumer still likes beef. Mm -hmm. They can do it. But don't be afraid to keep watching and monitoring. And from kind of a technical standpoint, I guess, um, looking at the charts, I know we've talked about the October chart. There is a little bit of a gap there. They can maybe run up and fill. That's at that 190, 77 and a half mark. And yep. then I'm trading at 186 right in that area right now. I mean, yep. is there any other technical 
things that a guy should look at. We kind of broke out of the uptrend and we're kind of maybe going sideways out of that. Um, depends on how you look at that trend, but. Right. And if you look at those front months, you see yourself in more of a sideways trend. If you're getting those deferreds out there, October, December, next February, it looks like a bit more of an uptrend. Uh, and again, I think it's nothing more than thinking numbers will be less. And that's why we're not selling those off as much, but otherwise, technically you're at some points that we're waiting for the cash and keep in mind that you are a premium to the cash right now on the board, not big ones, but you're at the time of year where it starts switching and where cash can go premium to the board. Mm -hmm. um, so could we go up in the cash market and the board doesn't have to follow? Yes. Um, but again, most of these prices, if they're not profitable, you're in trouble. Either what you paid for the cabs or how you're raising your cattle and not that you're going to get rich in some of those because it's, it's, it is very costly to raise that cap anymore. But you just have to know where you can manage your risk and what is the best alternative. And I did have a client call this morning and ask, you know, when you look at the, the government subsidized crop side of things, you know, with the weather coming in, is there anything I can do to purchase coverage on my cabs that'll be born in case we get a catastrophic storm and we would lose them? And the answer is the only product that's there to do that is the wean cap product, which came out last summer. Um, really hard to use it because they don't even have all the rules figured out yet. But the point of that one and where I'm coming from, if somebody talks about it, uh, sales closing date on that was January 31st. So that's past what you can do. You've mm -hmm. got to do something, futures or options, and all you can do is really protect price and, and not anything on, on depth losses. I think we'll uh, take a quick peek at the the hog market here too as well, Vince. Before we before we end this one, um, anything interesting? I guess that stood out in that market. It seems like it's kind of been sideways, like we've said with the other ones. Maybe maybe a little bit higher, but I don't know. Is there any numbers? I guess from a fundamental side that you've heard and in, in that side of things. You know, we're we're coming up with numbers that are a little bit bigger kills than the trade had been expecting. We've seen that for three or four months. We probably have it like the cattle another month, maybe two months before you're going to get those numbers to drop off. Uh, that's why that summer is a big premium. They are. But again, I don't see anything fundamentally that's ugly in here that could kill it. That June market, 99.50 to a buck, the April around $83. If we start closing below those. Then we've got something else that's scared the market. You got to be a little bit uh, cautious. Uh, the other note on that from a hedging standpoint is if you look at last week's commitment of traders report, uh, the producers out there are record short hedged on those summer months of hogs, hmm. which sometimes you get leaning too far one way. It could go the other way and where it's at. So we'll see how that works. And the other thing that's really been holding that product market up is the rib market. Uh, it's very getting to be quite high priced in there at a time of year where you usually don't see it. And that's maybe because the weather's been nice and we've been getting some and, and smoking them outside or doing some of those things. And then do you have any other thoughts, I guess, before we close this one out on any of the other egg commodities or anything else that a, that a producer should be listening for or watching for this week? You know, right in here, Probably a month ago, we talked about locking in some fuel needs right here. Isn't a good time for that. You had a pretty good rally. And there's lots of guys that think crude's going to run away from here and keep going. And maybe it does. Uh, I would think this 83 to $84 level in that May crude might be the most you do. And if you get a decent setback, and as we talked previous, if you can get that diesel fuel down to that 285 or three bucks or less, not a bad spot to at least be locking in. Uh, through the summertime, then maybe you can wait and see what harvest time does in case it drops. I think that's going to do it for this week's podcast. If we could be of any further assistance to you at Farmers Trading Company, feel free to give us a call. Our number is 996-6500 and check out our website, farmerstradingco.com for more information. Thank you.